I'm going to take you through trying out API Connect using our sample API. The API I'm going to demonstrate today shows how you can build a composite API within API Connect, combining data from two different backend systems. In this case, these systems are our order fulfillment system, which provides us with order details and status, and then the shipping company's shipment tracking API to provide package tracking of the delivery to see where it is on its journey to you. If you haven't already got access to an API Connect instance, you can find us in the AWS Marketplace where you can sign up for a free 30-day trial using this link just here. First of all, we're going to start with our sample API repository on GitHub, where our sample API lives. And in here, as you can see, we've got step-by-step -step instructions to import and start using the API for yourself. So first of all, I'm going to go into the API directory here and get the URL for our orders API sample by clicking on raw and then copying the URL from the address bar. Then if I go over to my instance of API Connect and go into develop APIs and products, I can start the process to import the API. If I go into add an API, and then if I scroll down for import, I want to import an existing open API. So I click next. And then I can paste in the URL from GitHub here, or if I downloaded it, I could drag and drop it over. Then I'm going to activate the API, which makes it available to test immediately in a development sandbox where you can experiment and test the API. As we see now, the API is online and it's given us the details of the gateway and the sample sandbox application. We don't need to use these now because the test tool will pre-fill them for us in a minute. So let's have a look at how this API is constructed. On the first page we see on the design tab, we've got the specification of the API, the description, terms of service, and further details. We can see that we've got one path defined, which takes in an order number. And we can see that that takes a get request and produces JSON as an output. If we go across to the gateway section, we can now see the assembly flow of the policies that make up this API. First of all, we have the order lookup, which takes the order number and goes off to our fulfillment system to find the order's details and gets back some JSON. We then pass that response so that we can use it further into the API. Then we have a map, which takes the two fields that we care that we need for the tracking, which is the delivery method, which contains the name of the company that the shipment's going through, and the tracking reference, which is their reference for tracking it. We then pass these into the output, which is then used as input for the next stage to invoke our Lambda function, which goes off um, to the shipment tracking systems to get the details of the package and where it is on its journey. We can see here we're using a Lambda function URL, so this is available to be called from API Connect. And then once that's returned, we have the final map policy to take the data from the tracking and the data from the order lookup and create this output consolidated from both that we use for our consumer. So now let's move on to the next section and test this API. So as we see, we've got the client ID pre-filled and we're going to put in a sample order number to test this with. As we activated the API during the import process, we can see that it's already online here. If not, you need to toggle that little box there to make sure it is. And then we click send. And we see here we've now got the response that we were looking for. We've got the tracking status coming back from the shipment company and the tracking reference and created at shipped at dates from the order fulfillment system. If we wanted to debug anything further with the API, if it wasn't working, we could go into the trace section and see each stage of the API and what went in and out of that stage. Now let's make some modifications to this API. First, we're going to add a slight change to the security model. Currently, we require just a client ID, but we're going to add in the requirement for a client secret as well to further validate the application. So if we go down to security schemes at the bottom of the design section and click plus, we're going to add a new client secret. So this is just the name for that. 
and then we decide define it as a API key of key type client secret and for security reasons we want that in the header rather than the query so it doesn't get logged on the way through any proxies on the way and then we're going to call it xibm client secret to match the existing xibm client id we could call this anything we wanted so put your own company name in rather than ibm and update the existing one to be the same if you want to so we created that and now that's defined as an option to use on the api but if we go back up to the general section we see that the security is only defined currently to have client id so let's select client secret as well so that we've got that requiring both of them now this is so this could be also set on the path level but in this case we're setting it for the whole api which has only got one path but you could have an api which had different security schemes for different sections of the api depending on what they were doing and what your requirements were once we've made that change we're going to save this and you'll notice that the little green online icon switches and we see that that's been updated as well because we're working in the the development sandbox that's updated the api on save so let's go over and test our new security requirement again as you'll see we've got the pop the fields pre-filled um, and we've got this new ibm client secret that we just defined so let's test this again with an order number and check that it still works yep as expected this is still working so now let's prove that that security option is work is working as we expect by removing that client secret so we've just got the fields that we had originally now if we send this one we should expect to get an error back because that's not authorized because it only has the client id and not the secret So now we've tested the API, let's have a look at the analytics section of API Connect to see how we would analyze the, the traffic to our API. As you can see here, we've got a set of dashboards available to us. And let's start with the API dashboard today. In this one, we can see the min, max and average response times, total number of API calls, and we can see a breakdown by API status code also the response time percentiles are quite useful when you've got more traffic to see what percent how how the also the response time percentiles are quite useful when you've got more traffic to be able to see how your apis are regularly performing as you get more traffic the graphs get more interesting and more useful for now we've only got a few apis but you can see the idea if we then go over to the discover tab we can see the individual api calls that have been made and we can see the 401 and we can click on that and see the steps that that's gone through and we see here there's not very much it's just gone through the routing and then come back with the result if however we compare that with what we see on the get request that gives us a 200 okay we can see all of the stages of the api so checking the client identification the rate limit and the security then going on into the API execution, where we've got the invoke, the pass, the map, the second invoke, and then the final map, just as we had on the assembly palette when we were building out the policies. So today we've imported an API, we've updated it to have additional security requirements, and we've looked at how this can be analyzed through the analytics section of API Connect. You've also got an API that you can use to explore some of the other capabilities of the product. For example, add even more security requirements, configure OAuth for the API, or maybe socialize your API via a developer portal for your consumers to find and view the documentation, which you could then customize with a theme. You could also automate the API deployment using a CI CD pipeline, making use of the API Connect toolkit. We're going to update these with more demos and instructions for additional use cases, so check back soon for more guides. And if you haven't already, you can try API Connect for free for 30 days by scanning the code on screen or going to the link. Thank you.